trying to quickly create my lower thirds. With an audience as cool as you, and a news schedule as cold as this, sometimes you've just got to hand it over to the listeners. We'll be doing that with a combination of Q&A and listener mail today, and we'll also be hearing from our long-lost Segway Crusher about what life is like on the outside. This is episode 128 of the Pocket Now Weekly, the once-a-week podcast where we discuss news and opinion from the world of mobile technology, smartphones, tablets, smartwatches, and beyond all that stuff you wished you had when you were young. From Boston's most cursed-at sound booth, I'm Michael Fisher. I'm joined, as usual, by a man who speaks softly and carries a big brain, Chief News Editor Stephen Shank. Hello. Oh, man, I have so many props within reach. My brain-shaped jello mold is sl- sadly not at my desk right now. But Very important to keep the gelatin close at hand, brother. Yeah. Please remember that for the mm-hmm. future. And back after an absence that feels longer than it's probably been, from Mod at Home, the Segway Crusher himself, Taylor Martin. What Welcome back. Up? Yeah, it's been. I'm glad you're here. It feels for, like it's been forever. Oh. It's so nice. It does feel like it's been forever. It feels like it's been forever for some of us. Some of us more than others. We'll talk about that a little bit. Everyone, Jules Wong is running the board remotely on this holiday show, and the time is precisely 12:05 p.m. Good afternoon. This episode of the Pocket Now Weekly, everybody, is brought to you by Squarespace, the service that makes it fast and easy to build your own professional website, portfolio, and online store. Squarespace gives you the tools you need to build a great-looking website, and because it's modern, your site also gets modern, responsive design, so it looks just as good on an iPhone as it does on an iMac. I finally got it right. And you get 24-7 customer support based in Portland, Dublin, and New Jack City. That's New York City for non-residents. Plans start at just $8 a month and include a free domain name if you sign up for a year. And if you're listening to this podcast and putting up with my stupid jokes, you get a free trial, no credit card required, and 10% off your first purchase. Save some money, build a great website, live a great life. Visit squarespace.com slash pocket now, remember that bit, and enter offer code pocket now at checkout. Squarespace, better websites for all. You know, one of these days when we actually do take ourselves up on this threat we've been making to just randomly talk about some movie for the entire episode, instead yeah. of doing, like, a tech movie, let's talk about New Jack City for an hour and a half. New that's a fan Jack City. Film. I agree. Wait, is that really a film? Yeah, directed by Mario Van Peebles, starring uh, Wesley Snipes, um, Judd Nelson, Chris Rock, one of the Ice, Ice-T or Cube, one of them. One of them. Oh, wow, that's, that's cool. idea. Crazy! I didn't know that. I thought I made the dish up. I already used the salsa joke. Oh no! I didn't know. Interesting. Well, Taylor's back. I'm so excited that Taylor's back. Before we let him talk about, I want to hear all about. Like it's like Taylor. It's like Taylor is the prison escapee. And yeah, I want to. I want to like talk to him. Where's he been spotted? Um, Before we do that, though, I'm I'm going to take a shot of Robitussin, and and Stephen has to tell people how to use the Q and A, right? Yeah, uh, this episode of the Pocket Now Weekly will be maybe a little more abbreviated than they've been in the past, but we're still going to do our best to answer any questions that you come up with while you're listening. So fire them off in the Q&A, the ones that get the, get the most votes from our other listeners. We'll do our best to address on the air. If we don't have time to get to yours, or if there's something you think of afterwards, maybe listening to the high-quality version of this when it goes up, shoot us an email, and we'll see if we can answer your question on a future show. That HQ, and if you're listening to the HQ uh, build of the podcast, um, I forgot there was something. I, uh, please read, read uh, write us a review. Vote on things, yes. <laughs> Enjoy the show. <laughs> I, we were talking off the air before we went live, folks, about how we're all, um, and by we're all, I mean everyone in this room is uh, is so so completely dead tired and uh, and just beat to hell by this year. And I'm looking forward to this year being over, not in the sense that like. A lot of people, um, a lot of sad people are like, oh, this year was the worst, blah, blah, blah. It wasn't. It was a great year, but it was also really taxing. And I'm about mm-hmm. to take, like, like a few days off, and that's going to feel real nice. The R and R. Yeah, but speaking of time off and time away, Taylor Martin, what the hell has been going on, man? People have been people oh, are man. tuning in to hear from you is what's going on. Yeah, I've, I've gotten a lot of comments and questions about it. In, in fact, the my favorite one so far is actually in the comment thread on the YouTube video or the stream. Yeah? I said, when is Michael coming back on Untethered? Uh, that's a question <laughs> oh, I won't answer. I, I understand, I know. <laughs> 
Uh, because I'm this is part sorry. of our agreement. We never we never ended that agreement, Michael. Oh. Uh, that is true. That is our strategic <laughs> our strategic alliance for me to be on every show that you are yeah. on for me. Yeah, you know how that goes. Yes, I know. <laughs> and I, I've been listening to Untethered on occasion. I listened to the Coffee podcast where I learned, and I was telling the guys over at, at Tech Beard, I'm like, man, when I listen to Untethered, I learn I learned so much about Taylor Martin because he's just unstoppable. He gets on a roll, and then all of a sudden we're hearing we're hearing so much about how Taylor Martin drinks his coffee, and I'm like, hey, is Joshua Vergara on the show? He hasn't talked in 17 minutes. Oh, there he is. Okay. Well, that's that's because my podcast doesn't really have a host. I like to play the part of host. Okay. But it's okay. it's kind of like a ship that no one steers. That's yeah. the way I like to think about it. Just yeah. like a raft floating down, letting the <laughs> high carry will. I hit record and anything goes. I like well, it. We know about Untethered, right? We've heard about Untethered before. We've <laughs> yeah. talked about it in this show. We haven't heard much about what's been going on at Mod. So, what have you built on Mod before we get into the news, Taylor? What have you been teaching us how to do since uh, since your departure? Well, this is what I did yesterday, which is uh, corks are too big for this thing. They just are. But <laughs> it's a it's a wine oh, smoker that uh... I made. For um, some Christmas presents. Oh, so the cork made... is a bottom part, and the the top is yeah. a custom carved and stained wood wooden stopper type thing. That yeah, organizers for you know to piss off cocoon. Taylor well, Martin is holding up something that looks like a, a circuit board, board from the 1965 sci-fi show. What this? Oh yeah. gosh, we're getting some mod music up in here. Yeah. Uh, but this is just an organizer, like. Uh, oh, it's got chapstick in it and like uh, toenail clippers. Yeah, this and... is the grid it. Uh, the cocoon grid it, and it it's oh, a like, slide stuff. Made, like a little cheap one for like. I gotcha. Yeah, oh, that's very. Um, nice. I've been making all kinds of crap, keychains yeah. and everything. They're I all saw over. You were covered in sawdust when I tried to search for <laughs> oh, it the other day. <laughs> yeah, I got covered last night. I was making uh like fifteen of these little wine stoppers. Oh man, yeah. I uh, my brother and uh, and and uh, my sister in law made those for their wedding, and uh, they didn't make them like that though. They're, those are cool. They look like wooden wooden future space crystals or something. They're they're pretty. Cool. <laughs> yeah. yeah, they're geometric. That's the only name. Like multifaceted. I don't know. Yeah, but they look just like the sort of crystal stoppers you get on like a fancy big brandy thing, except they're wood. Yeah, yeah. they're wood. Um, I've been just trying to figure out how to build a lot of stuff. I want to do bigger mods, but. Or, or projects, but I it's, I just have to build up to those because some of them are massive, some of them are really expensive, and the one that is the most requested out of all of the stuff I've ever done on the channel is the second part to the Nexus 7 uh, dash install in my car. Oh my god, yeah, people have been asking for that for like over a, a year, year, haven't they? they? They've been begging me for it, and I will do that eventually. I mean, I'm, I've got my Nexus 7 up and running again, and I will work on that. I plan to work on that the week after Christmas. Just no, no. get it you out should, of the way. Do you know how to weld? I I do know how to weld. I don't have a welder. You need to build your own motorcycle. This is the next logical yeah. step. Yeah. Well, actually, I, I posted because the the. Let me know when you get an oxyacetylene torch on mod because mm. I want to see that in action. My dad has one. And oh, I can go there and use so it at cool. any time. Uh, yeah. He actually just about burned his entire hand with that one time. Well, that'll it's do not it. Good. That's like <laughs> It'll do that. somewhere over yeah. 2,000 degrees, like 2,500 ain't, degrees. Ain't no toy. I brazed no. together a real nice driveway sign with an oxyacetylene torch in metal shop in high school. Good times. Yeah. Anyway, listen, uh, we got to talk about technology because the news, ah. while brief, is um, is still the news, and it's still here. I, and, and Stephen has to tell us about some things that are, I think, Taylor, to you and me, equally infuriating, particularly this first topic. So let's have Jules sound the news enunciator, and let's do this thing. Businesses seek right to block Wi-Fi hotspots. Stephen, what the <laughs> shit is this, and right. how soon until I burn down a Marriott? I, probably not too soon. I think this has very low chance of actually happening. So the backstory on this is that uh, this Marriott Hotel and Conference Center, somewhere uh, down south, it might be in your neck of the woods, Taylor, it got in trouble uh, with the FCC earlier this year because the Conference Center part of it was blocking the uh, portable Wi-Fi hotspots on guests' smartphones. So they would use their uh, network infrastructure at the hotel there to break the connections between your smartphone and your laptop to make it very frustrating if you're trying to get online when you're traveling. Of course, the hotel itself was selling its own Wi-Fi package. I mean, you were used to paying a lot for 
uh, well, unless you're at a, a nice hotel, you're paying a lot extra for like a daily Wi-Fi pass. But for the conference, it was ridiculous. It was like two hundred to thirteen hundred dollars, depending on the length of time you were there. So this there was big money at stake, and the Marriott decided it was going to prevent people from using their own devices. FCC got wind of this, slapped them with a big old multi hundred thousand dollar fine. Yeah. But and that should have been the end of the story. But then Marriott came back like, well, okay, you said we couldn't do this, but thing is, we really, really want to do it. So they filed a <laughs> formal petition with the FCC seeking uh, maybe some rules on if and when this might be acceptable. And they're describing this not as a tool to you know drive Wi-Fi purchases, uh, you know, getting it some time, or you know, buying so many megabytes from them. They're not doing it like that. They're describing this as network management, in that somehow by having these non-official Wi-Fi hotspots pop up in their conference center, it's undermining the integrity of their own network. And part of me thinks, like, okay, maybe I can see how this is a problem. If someone created a Wi-Fi AP on their phone that was named very similarly to the Marriott one and was running uh, sort of proxy in there for looking for unencrypted connections, trying to grab passwords. In theory, I can see a super remote possibility that there could be some nefarious actions uh, being propagated by people with their own portable hotspot. But by and large, that's not what we're doing. We just want to get online with our data plans, with our devices that don't have their own cellular connections. So really, really hoping the FCC doesn't buy this argument. A bunch of tech companies have already uh, stood up in uh, opposed to Marriott, um, and Microsoft is one of them, but then there are also companies that have been backing uh, the Marriott group, and uh, Cisco Systems, which unsurprisingly sells a lot of the hardware that might be used for the network management things that um, Marriott wants to do. And more than that, just, I think, wants to keep the market open for their Wi-Fi management tools in the future. Uh, yeah. Comments are officially closed. FCC hasn't ruled either way on this, so we're probably fretting a little too soon, but it's uh, the, troubling. The flip side of this, it is troubling, and the, the flip side, of course, is that it, uh, if you have a network that is tuned to work in a specific configuration, as Nacho King P points out in the comments, uh, people coming in and stepping all over it with their, their own access points can really screw it up for any, everyone trying to use but, the in-house network. I, but, I get it. I understand. But Wi-Fi is unlicensed spectrum. It's open. It's supposed to be able to deal with competition from unwanted signals. There's you're, there's no guarantee that the Wi-Fi system you go to all this trouble to set up is going to be able to function unmolested by intrusive signals. That's just that's part of the deal. If you want something that has a guaranteed set of the spectrum uh, allocated to you, you can license it. You can pay a crap load of money to the FCC. But this is part of the deal. When you go into the Wi-Fi, you accept that there is going to be this the potential for people interfering with it. Did I tell you, uh, speaking of the jamming thing, Taylor, I'll, I'll let you go in a second. Did I tell you the uh, that, that when I was working in a, in a shopping mall and the, the guy the jewelry store moved in and they didn't want people using phones in their store? They put jammer in an illegal one? Yeah, they threw they put a jammer in, and we didn't know. We were like, "Why the hell don't any of our phones work on the 800 megahertz band in here? What's what the hell is going yeah, on?" I should point out this isn't a straight up jamming, as far as I can tell. It's not because they're obviously wanting to use their own signal. They're using Wi-Fi hardware, I assume, to deauthenticate connections between uh, the personal hotspots and the devices that people <laughs> use, rather than just putting just a general kill field out that knocks out all Wi-Fi. I do not support it. Taylor, what was your? What were you going to say? Well, two things. There was that one guy who recently got slapped with a huge fine for putting a, a cell jammer in his car and driving yeah, a highway. Yeah. Highway yeah. worth driving. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. That's crazy. Yeah. That's just dumb. He, he, yeah, he was an idiot. Um, but there's also it, this really makes me re like it. Kind of reminds me of these press events that we go to. These one-off press events where there are like 800 signals and right, you no one can actually. Yeah. Yeah. No one can actually get any sort of data transfer whatsoever, because everything is is trying to go. It, the whole entire system is clogged. The network. Everything is just. It's a traffic jam, is what it is, and that's the only reason something like this might 
make sense. Yeah. But but it's even exactly then, what you're talking about like conventions with a lot of people with their own devices in one place. So it it makes a little bit of sense. It's crappy, but but even in that case, if there are that many tr- people trying to use the internet. I can't imagine that a single network is going to work better uh, than 50 separate networks. Like, it just... Their solution benefits them and them only, and that's why I don't like it. Now, I think we still have to keep in mind, there are other ways to tether your device without using Wi-Fi. You can tether over USB, you can tether over Bluetooth, if it comes to it. It's probably less convenient than the Wi-Fi, but... Much that's Much less. Isn't the, isn't the data throughput significantly reduced if you tether on Bluetooth? I don't know. What's Bluetooth's maximum... I don't know. I Bluetooth mean, it's has version. the the data transfer it's, rates of Bluetooth have actually come up, but I don't know what they are now. Low megabit range, I assume. Okay. Well, I guess we'll see how this develops. I I hope that they uh, get get smacked down and and you know this does not become more of a thing than it, was, it already is. I just I, yes. that, that's 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 a lot of that's just, pretty brazen. Just yeah, imagine no. a future tech event or a press event where you have to go to this place and pay two hundred dollars to use the Wi-Fi for an hour. Yeah, <laughs> right. that's that's the ramifications of something like this. Honestly, coming with like a backpack with like a five hundred meter spool of Ethernet cable, yeah, trailing behind you. Yeah. All right, Stephen, what's uh, what's next on the rundown here? Uh, let me see. Where did Is it you... the transparent Firefox oh, phone? Because yeah. I can't wait to talk about I... that. Am I wrong in thinking this is the prettiest phone I've seen in a while? Oh, no, it's not, but we can do that now. Um, You are not wrong. Yeah, so Japan is getting its first Firefox OS phone. The platform's been around, it feels like a couple years by now. Um, It hasn't really gained much traction in, uh, well, it has been in the West. In Europe, we've seen sales. The U.S. hasn't been too keen to pick up with it, but I think a lot of the pushback that, Uh, customers have had against it is the phones themselves have been kind of shitty. They've been really, really low-end. We're talking half VGA displays, uh, very low-end processors, maybe 3G connectivity. So anytime you have a phone that's even approaching like a modern mid-ranger, it's kind of reason to get excited. So this new Firefox phone, it's called the FX0, which is neat. It almost looks like it's uh, like a hexadecimal address, but it's not well, it could be, but uh, it's made by LG. It's not being promoted as such, but this is LG uh, producing the hardware. It's being sold in Japan on carrier KDDI starting um, Christmas Day. It's going to run a little over $400, and the hardware is very mid-rangey. I saw some commenters were comparing it to the new Moto G, and that's not too far off. It's got a, a 720p display, I think it's 4.7 inches, Snapdragon 400, 16 gigs of... Uh, internal storage with micro SD expansion and this really cool transparent looking case. Yeah, it's gold and I don't know about gold phones, but you can see inside and I know there's you know, plastic shielding you can't see into like the circuitry, but you still see like the micro SD slot, the SIM card, all the speaker elements. It's kind Very of cool. early it reminds 2000s, me a lot of like clamshell custom yeah, super clear you know, clamshell the 90s, case. Uh, there was but, Game, Nintendo had all these Game Boys, and there was a transparent one that I always wanted. Yeah. It reminds me a lot that of that. That one was cool, though. That one was like a purplish pink translucent casing. This is an ugly. I don't like the gold. Yeah, yeah I, the I do not like the, the bronze tone to it. I, I'll give you that. I like a, I like a hint of blue in my transparent cases, and if you can manage it, some flashing LEDs behind there to uh, yeah, but really, really give yourself some spark. It's very tech looking. I love the uh, the picture they have in the press image here, which is just the FX zero tiled over and over. It's so. It's like the Matrix phone. It's a very Matrix phone. I was just going to say that. Yes, absolutely. All I can imagine, you saying that, that like some flashing LEDs, all, all I can imagine with this phone is like it's one of those those light-up shoes the little kid wears. Like, yeah. Oh, yeah, 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 the palm, yeah, yeah. It'll start flashing for like 30 <laughs> yeah. seconds. Yeah. Yes. It'll light up. And the, the sequel is going to have uh, like the pump. You know, you're going to have like a thing on the back <laughs> nice. and just it a couple times when the phone it pops up. The, the, the next button. one will That's have right. a pop-out wheel and you can use it as a one-wheeled <laughs> skateboard. Awesome. Absolutely. Now, the, uh, the thing about this is that... Um, Jules is making me dizzy with that scrolling. Uh, yeah. the, the thing with this is that um, it's $415, and for this kind of price tag, especially for the markets it's apparently meant for, that confuses me. Yeah, uh, I was trying to see what like the uh, Moto G goes for in Japan, because I have I don't have a great sense of comparison for Japanese phone prices. Maybe this isn't as steep as it seems for the hardware. I think it's kind of reasonable, but then again, compared to existing 
Firefox OS phones, which are significantly lower. I don't know. Yeah, I'm not sure. I mean, it's it's interesting. I don't know enough about the the pricing structure in the markets. This thing is on sale for to to comment too far. But that commenter, as you mentioned, who said that this is basically the same uh, the same thing as the G2, as the Moto G2, rather. Um, yeah, spec wise. I mean, but I wish the G2 looked like this. Yeah, I wish the G2 came in a clear in a clear case yeah. uh, variant, the Bloomingdale's edition. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the Android tablet that we are divided about, the N1, is uh, going to launch in very early 2015. Is, is yeah, that speaking of stuff happening in Southeast Asia, uh, we knew that the tablet was coming to the M1 would go for sale in China in the first quarter of the year. And I think they even mentioned, or at least one of the commenters uh, mentioned, that it was confirmed by the Chinese New Year, which is the middle of February. Now we heard this January 7th date, which is as nearly early 2015 as you can get. Um, that's just for China, and we know that Nokia has said that the N1 will be released in other markets around the world. I think at least Europe was confirmed on there, but we don't have any sense of the timetable. If that's like later in Q1, Q2, Q3, who knows at this point. But just getting it out there, I think, will be a, a great start, and we could finally start hearing some first-hand accounts of what this thing's like to use, if that Intel chip is as powerful as it needs to be, how it holds a candle to the Nexus 9 and other Android tablets of similar form factor, and considering how low the price is on here, if this is a, a really, really compelling bargain tablet. And what it's like to what it's like to buy it and what it's like to deal with Foxconn's sales yeah. and customer support. Uh, I missed this comment before we moved on, but in the Q&A, Dante Solobot says, I'm old. I love the idea of a transparent phone. I also want to have beanbag chair in my room and an Optimus Prime bed cover. <laughs> Retro phones for the win. Outstanding, yeah, man. I dig it. Uh, the final bit of news is the uh, Lumia 1320 successor, which segues nicely into uh, into the first Q&A we're going to hit after this. For me, I don't know what it will do for you guys. But this is rumored as a significant upgrade rather than, what, a forgettable one, Stephen? Yeah, uh, they're talking about... I'm kind of confused by... The, how this rumor fits in with some of the other things we've been hearing about Windows Phone. Because this is, I don't know whether to consider this a flagship or not. It's getting a, supposedly a 14 megapixel pure view camera, but it would stick with a, a lower end SOC, I believe. Did we say a, a Snapdragon 400 in here? Yeah, four, Snapdragon 400. Yeah. So, because uh, I'm considering we heard a rumor like a week or so ago that Microsoft might not have another Lumia flagship until far late in 2015, something like around September, maybe August. Uh, this guy, it sounds like we're talking about it a lot sooner. Um, I mean, there's no specific date attached to this, because hearing about it at this point, you have to assume it will be out uh, a lot in advance of that late 2015 date. I guess it doesn't count as a flagship and it would fit in with that, but... It doesn't. I mean, uh, it's a 720p display on a 5.7-inch size. Windows phone. Snapdragon 400. Yeah, but I mean, like, there's still, there's still very clear stri striations in, in the Windows phone ecosystem, and this is mm. decidedly unexciting. Um, eh, not loving it. Yeah, I, I mean the 1320. Jaime makes a good point in, the, in his first line here. The Jaime, uh, the, the, the 1320 Jaime. was buried by the 1520 when it when yeah. it, you know came out. And um, certainly, if you're looking to save some money and you just wanted a big screen, you didn't want all the power. But I've never like you know between the Galaxy Mega and and all those those devices, I've never seen. Really, that. it's the 1530 you want to hear about, not some 1330. Exactly right, and if we're not going to be hearing about them for a long time, that's frustrating. Um, speaking of that, what was the worst brand? The one that disappointed you guys most this year? Thanks. Bruno Gomez mm -hmm. asked in the Q&A. And I utilized that segue uh, because, you know, it, if you had asked me this question two weeks ago, I wouldn't have been sure what to say. But with all this freaking talk, with with if this rumor is true, and even if it's not true, the fact that I don't have a 1020 replacement um, here that I don't have a follow-up to the 930 or the 1520, even though it's a little early for the 930. Um, the fact that we're not ending the year on a really high-end Microsoft flagship really, really frustrates me. And, and I think Microsoft is the most disappointing to me in that sense, uh, just because they've failed to keep up the, the frequency of, of updates that oh, man. is necessary on the high-end. Now, we talked about this a lot last week, so I'm not going to go into it too much, but... Stephen, yeah. What, no, I guess I guess remembered that we were definitely at this point not getting a Surface Mini tablet this year. I oh, know it was kind of pushed under true. the table. I had been holding out hope maybe it would pop up in like 
late November or something, but I guess yeah, it's not going to yeah. happen. Oh, I was using the Surface Pro 3 to uh, to clean my Lumia, by the way. So I uh, I finally got back on my 1020 last night, and I was using the house Surface Pro 3 to use the Lumia recovery tool so I could start from scratch uh. with this thing. That was a lot of fun. But I remembered what it was like to use Windows on the desktop, and, like, I, I, I was installing the Microsoft software. I was installing, like, the Lumia recovery tool, and it was like, do you want to here, enter your password so that we can make changes to the system? All right, sweet. And then it's like, oh, it wants uh, it wants security clearance to uh, change this aspect of the system. Enter enter your system password. Okay, fine. Seriously, three seconds later, it's like, oh, it needs to change this other aspect of the system. Enter your password again. No, it's you like, don't need to enter your password. I just click yes each time. No, you do. You need to. I mean, the the way that our Surface Pro is three is yeah. set up, it's it's apparently just the most secure settings you can choose. I don't is know, it, but I was so. Is it still the same one that that Adam Lane had? Yeah. 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 That, that, oh my god, because the password is it's not just that you have to enter the password, it's that the password is so ludicrous and weird. It's just... <laughs> yes, it is weird. Let's just all share our passwords on the air. Oh yeah, no, no. Um Taylor, you're still working with a uh, with a with a Mac what in your off time? Do you have any exposure to any Windows products in your uh, in your outside life? Uh not anymore, not right now. <laughs> I'm shaking my head. Um, I mean, I have an old tower from probably 1995. Nice. It probably yeah, runs better than the time. Surface Pro 3. <laughs> it does not. No, the Surface Pro 3 runs well. It just no, it asks does. for I, permission I, I, every I, time I want to move the mouse pointer. I, I really wish my time run. with the Surface Pro 3 hadn't been so tainted with power issues. I really do. Mm. Power. Because, power. I mean, I couldn't get the thing to turn on half the time. Like, I literally... Like, I would leave it charging overnight and unplug it and then take it somewhere and it'd be dead. Just like, what are you I'm doing? Oh, that, I remember uh, you complaining about that. Yeah. Yeah. It's and so that's been solved, it seems. But I do um, want to say, because I didn't yeah. get to answer that question, thank you very much. I'm sorry. I want to say that I'm disappointed with every brand because I stepped away <laughs> from the mobile market for two months now and I was expecting like 16 core processors, like 40 megapixel cameras on every phone, <laughs> bigger screens. Choice. Four gigs of RAM is finally going to happen. That's something. It's been two months, guys. Come on. Yeah, come on. <laughs> Should have phones with, with rocket boosters on them by yeah, now. Yeah, exactly. God, I saw that four gig headline, and I was like, God, why? Just why? Why, why, why not? Bother? Because uh, fix the underlying issues first. Yes. Yes, yes, thank you, Michael. But Don't I, make I mean, me wait no, for no. to hit a multitasking if, button. To, like, if you wanted to fix the underlying issues, then phones or apps would be using like 20, 30 megs of RAM, not 300 a pop. It's not the memory management. It's that apps are demanding too much memory to begin with. Hmm. Yeah, this might that be a long debate. Hmm. Yeah. Do you have an answer, Stephen, or your brand? No, I... I I don't know, and I kind of want to hold off because I feel like, isn't this one of the collaborative things we'll be addressing in the days to come at the end of the of year? Of course, it's the end of the year. so I'm disappointed in so many things. I'll have to, to pick one in particular. I'm going to have to think about it. Yeah, Bruno, stay tuned. We're going to run a piece on this, so uh, thank you for, for submitting that. I don't know anything about games, guys, so maybe you can help me with this. Hey, guys, says Dante Solibut. Hey, now Nintendo have announced they're working on the next-gen console. What? what do you think of the rumors of a Nintendo smartphone? Would a phone with exclusive access to Nintendo apps be a winner? No. No, I don't think so. And also, didn't the Wii U come out like a year ago? Or am I just uh, not maybe two years ago, but it, it's something also U-shaped, I believe. But I don't know. That was the coolest aspect of the Nintendo U was its shape and, and port portability. But that's it. Like, Nintendo, yeah, anytime... Can, like, go ahead, Taylor, I'm sorry. I was just saying Nintendo is really struggling right now to, to find something compelling. Yeah, I think Nintendo is going to end up like Sega did and become a software company. Maybe, uh, yeah. They're, they're they're and, and anytime... Really. I mean, they have so many games that are classics that people just yeah. still play. That's the play. most valuable thing is their, their game assets. Their hardware is not good. Look at what's nah. happened to every brand that's tried to to build their own smartphone uh, recently. You had you had Facebook. Facebook tried mm -hmm. it twice, and that's freaking Facebook, Facebook and tried they couldn't it more make it than work. Twice. You well, the Cha Cha, the Salsa, and the HTC first, right? There was another HTC phone. I can't remember. Or there was another phone. I don't remember which one it was. 
They tried it and it failed before it ever made it to market. I wrote about it one time. Oh, uh, okay, Roger. Really? So, yeah, yeah and I think it's Sony and what it's been able to do in smartphones and consoles, which, I mean, but, Xperia Play from a while back kind of crashed and burned. Uh, yeah. Do either of you have a PlayStation 3 and have tried using it with an Xperia phone? Because I know there's some level uh, of connectivity between them, but I'm an Xbox yes, kind of guy. I can't imagine how well it works. PS4. Yeah. Uh, Joshua Vergara from Android Authority bought a PS4 almost specifically so he could also get the Tablet Z Compact and play his uh. PS4 games from a tablet. And I don't know no, if he's that's actually... That's badass. Yeah, that's I don't dope. know if he's actually done that yet, but... That's something I would like to try out. That would be so sweet, being able to like lay in bed and play a full-fledged console game from a tablet on your bed. Just totally agree. It's like totally what Nvidia is trying to do with the Shield and the streaming from GeForce cards on the PC. Yeah, but that one, that one is so niche. Like, how many people actually yeah. PC? And not not you how many need people the really PC high-end game? video card and the right. console hardware. Right, so who actually has that specific video card and an NVIDIA tablet and wants to do that? Like, I that's thought about me- trying it. I think mine technically would work, but I was warned it's such on the bottom end of the spectrum that it would be a awful, unbearably laggy experience were I to try it. So I haven't even ventured into that. I just wish it was... Uh, I think it might be Mac compatible. I don't remember. Um, because I, I have an NVIDIA graphics card in this MacBook but I don't know if it's high-end enough to do that. And that's what I was looking into, because they were also offering that with the Shield, but they didn't roll it out fast enough before I had to get the Shield back to Brandon, so I was really upset. This is a nice question that we, all three of us, I think, can have an opinion on. Uh, hello, gentlemen, says uh, Shervan Haranand. I think I got close. I would like to know what you guys love and hate about lollipops <laughs> Just got my Note 3 with Cyanogen Mod 12 bumped up to 5.0.2, and I can honestly say I am loving it. Also, do any of you run custom ROMs on your smartphone? I don't do custom ROMs. Do you guys? I used to. I want to get back into it because I'm so dissatisfied with Lollipop stock. I've been trying ROMs ever since I left Pocket Now, just, you know, dabbling here and there and just trying to make the most of this M8 because it's starting to feel a little old Mm -hmm. to me. I still like it, but it it needs something. And I'm done with Sense for now. I, I converted it back to a GPE, and now it's running official Lollipop from Google. Um, but I, I did try CyanogenMod and all these different ROMs, and it's just such a hassle to ha- like keep everything updated and upgraded and current. And I just said, screw it, I'm going back to stock. Um, but Lollipop so far, I really like it. I really do. There are some things that... Uh, actually, Dustin pointed it out to me before we started recording the last Untethered, um, the colors, some of the colors in Lollipop are hideous. Uh, the dialer is pretty bad, but the the calculator is so ugly. It's seafoam green. Like who wow. chose that color? <laughs> Why who did I switch that? back to Windows Phone before this podcast? I don't have. I don't even have a Lollipop device here. in here right uh, now. Here, I'll show you. Like I, I, yeah, like, I know what you mean because the timer, like the timer and the clock and the alarm clock, those are all finished in this like mauve. Uh, or this is this odd violet color. That's I mean, it's odd. It's not. And there's a lot of sherbet in lollipop. I feel like it's like the camera. <laughs> it's, on. Yeah, yeah. colored like that is hideous. What is that? What do you? What kind of screen are you even showing us? There's like a. It's split and there's an offset. Oh, it's the calculator. Oh, yeah, it's the cal- That's yeah. a slide out menu for the calculator. Oh, oh okay, okay. Also, yes. um, just to the the many people out there who like the new action launcher. Uh, oh, I would say not. Action Launcher pairs perfectly, perfectly with Lollipop because all these other launchers get one thing wrong, and that is the the Google Now integration. This integrates perfectly with Google Now. Still swipe to the right. Okay. And uh, it's there, but you also get your app drawer and a bunch if of other. You swipe in from the bezel. I yeah. see. So the new Action Launcher, good. I, so many people ask me so many questions about phones still. And I just can't answer them. Yeah. <laughs> I just can't. Well, uh, I Stephen and I were on opposite sides of the fence here because I couldn't stand, uh, or Stephen couldn't stand a lot of things about Lollipop, and I actually really, really, really liked it. And I first. really, really like some things. It's just, it's not enough to put me over the fence. Yeah, I, for, for me, do. I've been running it on my Moto X since I, I finally got my update on the Moto X, and for the first, like, four days-ish was nice. 
and then something happened and I don't know what that something was who knows that it wasn't me for sure Ooh. but something changed and suddenly my Moto X started running like utter crap and now I'm waiting for a lollipop on the Moto X just as I waited for it on the Nexus 6 <laughs> and it's I I it's just like it's so frustrating to have lag on a on a stock build or a near stock build of a modern version of Android. I mean, you, you shouldn't be yeah. waiting for any modern version I, of Android. Oh, my God. just this no um, moment realized, I've been for, like, weeks now dismissing Nexus 5 persistent it's time for you to upgrade to Lollipop notifications. They stopped oh. appearing. I've been clicking later for weeks and weeks and weeks. It finally got the message. It got the hint that you <laughs> yes. didn't want it? I do want to say, like, I have one gripe about Lollipop. Yeah. One so far that I've actually really ran into. I can deal with colors. The biggest problem is no actual silent mode. It's coming in the next one. Okay, well, there is good. there is an actual silent well, mode. You can, you can, no, getting back to one, like, just keep pressing volume down to yes. get to silent, that's coming back. You can't just volume down and then put your phone down. You have to volume down and then tap, like, yeah. either oh, indefinitely. Yeah. That's too agree. And that's yeah. annoying because... Totally annoying, yeah. Because no, you can only go to vibrate, and I don't want... Like, the problem is that, for some reason with the new update, I've been having issues with Android Wear and the Lollipop on the phone, where if I say, silence the connected phone, it won't silence. It'll just vibrate. Oh, that's the worst. Because vibrate the issue is not silence, as we know. Oh, my God. So I've been... My, my yeah. iPhone buzzes, my M8 buzzes, and my watch buzzes. And I'm just... Yeah. Mm. Uh, Nathan Lococo uh, makes a good bing, bing, bing. point. He says the browser bar colors are really cool. I do like that. I like how the notification bar now, the color shifts and adapts to whatever the, the palette of the app you're in is. I really like that. There, are, that That's where yeah, Lollipop shines for me. Chrome. That's where it shines for me is the really, really, really small stuff. The the attention to tiny little details. I love that. Mm, I hate it, the multitasking, though. Well, it's here's another example of Here's another example of how that's cool. Um, in Action Launcher, I don't know if you can actually see it, the search bar is yellow, and it pulls that from the wallpaper, and I'm using Muse. Oh, that's kind of neat. So if I go to Muse and skip to the next wallpaper, whatever the color is when I go home, well, it's, there we go. It kind Whenever of like I go home, it color. updates. It, it keeps the color of whatever the wallpaper is, and the up wallpaper changes every few hours. That's pretty neat. So yeah. that, that's probably my favorite thing. Although it's not working right now. That's, that's yeah. my point. Like, there it is. It's, it's, it's the small stuff. It's it the attention cool. detail that, that, yeah. that Lollipop really wins at. It's just broad performance where it suffers. And I don't think it's thanks to those animations. I think that that's, it's an easy conclusion to draw. It's an easy thing to, 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 to pin the blame on. But I, don't, I really don't see those animations taking up so many yeah. processor cycles. I mean, Apple can do it just fine. Windows Phone can do it just fine. Taylor's showing us something it's else. Stuttering. So it went red, red, and there was a main red color in there. Oh, and I like that red. red bar. Yeah. And it changes the app drawer color. It, everything, everything changes with it, and it's so nice. Everything changes. Listener mail. Yeah. Let's uh, let's take a break from the Q and A, get into listener mail a little bit. Jules, why don't you let us know uh, when we can proceed by using the WebOS bong bong. Sure, sure, or tough spot. You know, whatever, whatever, however we want to do it, man. Music, <laughs> music. Listen, it's it's your show, man. Do what, <laughs> gadgets in hand, tough spot. You know, we'll just run through the whole board. <laughs> hey, uh, the first me mail is from uh, Min Nguyen, who's written to us before. And uh, this is something I can talk about since I'm back in the Lumia 1020. When you guys commented on the state of Windows Phone last week, the panel commented about the absence of the platform on a flagship level and how there's speculation that there will be no flagship for the company until the autumn of next year. Right. So with that information in mind, I keep forgetting about the 1M8. I keep forgetting to mention the damn 1M8, but it's just evaporates from my brain. Sorry, that's not <laughs> in the mail. That's me. So with that information in mind, is there any reason at all to buy a Windows Phone? I'm a Windows Phone user, and while I love the OS, I'm seriously asking myself the same question. No. Love to hear your opinion. You guys are doing a great job. Keep it up. Also, happy holidays, guys. Taylor says no. Happy holidays to you, Min Nguyen. Taylor, justify your answer. Uh, being so far away from Windows Phone has made me just care less and less about it. I have no, no Windows Phone, no Microsoft devices in my possession, and I... I can't yeah. see why I would want I would even recommend it to anyone. 
Hey, I finally and, spotted and people using it in public, which I'd never yeah. seen before. Yeah, I see it actually quite a bit in Boston, but it's all the low end stuff. Mm. I, uh, I see tractors and big trucks, <laughs> um, but and a lot of Wrangler jeans around oh, here. Oh yeah, no yeah. windows. Yeah. Are good too. Interesting. <laughs> Uh, so the the reason that I wanted to read this one is not to have an answer prepared, but to say that I am in the midst of trying to find out an answer for you, uh, Min, because I uh, was in danger of being in Taylor's shoes. As I've said many times on the show before, I go from review device to review device, and usually that means Android, because Android is dominant right now. Um, so I spent a long time not using Windows Phone, and now... As of last night, I've switched back to my 1020. I'm very happy to be back on it. I was happy to set up Windows Phone 8.1 from scratch. And uh, I'm going to spend the next week or so determining how much I, what, what of Android I miss on Windows Phone, uh, how Windows Phone has grown since my last Windows Phone review, which was the one I made for Windows, and um, whether I want to spend part of the next year on the platform as well. So look for a piece on that. Mm -hmm. uh, the announcement piece will be tonight, I think, and then the, the conclusions will be in about a week from now. So uh, oh, cool. we, we will see. Yeah, it's, it's going to be a good time. It's Are you doing another you voice control? What? Are you doing another voice control challenge? Is that no, what you're doing? No, 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 no. It's not because it's not okay. like it's it, it's specifically not that. It's like I'm trying Windows Phone for seven days. I'm a freaking hero. It's not that because I own the 1020 already. I want I've wanted to go back to it for a long time. But now, when you have um, very high profile people in the industry leaving Windows Phone and writing about how they're leaving Windows Phone, I just wanted to take the opposite tack. I wanted to say, okay, I've been away from it for a while. Let me go back to it and see what's worth staying for. And uh, interestingly, or not, it's not interesting. It's just it's interesting to me, so I'll share it. Uh, my roommate and I have been playing through the entire Halo series, so <laughs> I've got Cortana on the brain like crazy um, because she's a big part of that series, and it's nice to be able to have a virtual assistant with a personality. Whereas Google Now is awesome, and I adore Google Now. I'm gonna miss it really hard, but it's just nice to like. Yeah, you have no connection to Google Now. Exactly, it's nice to have an attachment to my personal assistant. I don't need to be attached to a computer. Good for you. <laughs> and so also, I'm sorry that you're playing through Halo. That's such a terrible game series. Oh, man. <laughs> I'm, all I'm the, the worst all, to talk to about Halo. The, for all the, uh, the times you've accused me of being a hipster, friend, I want to, I want to inform you that you, you, the, your plaid stripes are starting to come through on that shirt right there. You want to watch out. Or the... Actually, on the bed. The plaid's on the bed right now. On the bed. Nah. On the bed. Uh, see, I'm there you, you sleep in it. That's the problem. <laughs> no, I, I just now. never... Halo has never appealed to me. Oh, that's um, so I fascinating, say, but we're going to move on from that. Well, yeah, go ahead. I want to say, and it's sort of relative, I want to try the BlackBerry Classic. Yeah? Yeah, we I mean, talked about that the passport this week. I, I, no, 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 the classic, not the past. Yeah, I know, but the, if you're going to cue a BlackBerry phone from the past six months, the classic is just like a Q10 in a shiny new package. Yeah, but no, the but, passport is a, a, like a, a ridiculous flying mattress. Well, BlackBerry's this, ridiculous. This is as useful <laughs> as the, the passport. This right here, it's the same shape and size as a passport. <laughs> Nobody needs that. I, I got yeah. this. I don't need a passport. I, I actually but just worth, had I'm, some BlackBerry nostalgia the other day. That's all it was. Like, Me too. I, Me I was too. Like, and the, man, the classic just, is inspiring that in a lot of people. I, yeah. I'm with you 100%. Yeah, bring back trackpads. I wish BlackBerry loved me enough and knew how much I used to love them to send me one and be like, hey, try it again. But they don't. <laughs> I've said <laughs> so many right. terrible things about BlackBerry that they, they're just we like, I hate, they, they don't even know who I am anymore. Then We've talked a lot about that on the show too. We're not going to do it again. We're done with that. We're moving mm. on and we're not, we're not holding on to the past. Uh, who's next? It's um, it's Roy, and uh, Roy has something to say, Stephen. Why don't you give voice to his sure, sure. concerns? Roy says hi to Michael and the rest of the Pocket Now team and asks, do you guys think that 2013 was a better smartphone year compared to 2014? I've been disappointed with most phones released this year. Uh, here are a few of my disappointments. Nokia Lumia 1020 versus, well, it has no real competition on the high-end imaging. Indeed. Uh, the Nexus 5 versus Nexus 6, with the 6 coming in expensive and a little bulkier for some tastes. 
uh, the Moto G upgrade this year. We got a larger Moto G, but not much changing under the hood. Uh, Galaxy S4 versus S5, whether or not the design changes to that dimpled band-aid back were really an improvement or not. Also in Samsung territory, Note 3 versus Note 4, a better stylus, and he thinks Note 4 feels better, but didn't really think the other upgrades were worth moving to a new model. Let's see some more here. Uh, M7 versus M8, again, design issues, feeling the M8's a little too tall. Uh, Moto X, yeah, we got better specs compared to at least the Moto G upgrade situation, but different look, and maybe the dimple on the back, the smaller one that really fit right in your, not even a dimple anymore, I guess that flat panel on the back, uh, was a uh, step in the wrong direction. Yeah. Oh, and the uh, iPhones, uh, 5S versus 6 Plus, well, that's pretty obvious, bigger screen, um, but is this something that, you know, Apple users have been asking for, or... Uh, let's see. Oh, and what's OIS, I think, on the smaller devices yeah. as well. Uh, there's a lot of territory to cover there. Um, I kind of agree with some of the points, especially when we're looking at these individual models that we really liked last year. We're expecting big things from their successors. I'll agree. I kind of preferred the look of the old Moto X. I think the uh, Moto G should have been more very upset about the Nexus 6. We were just talking about how we wish there was a new 1020. He kind of has some points here. He has some points, but I'm half and half with it. Like, for example, that Moto G, uh, the Moto G and the Moto X both. Yeah, I liked the idea of, of the Moto... I, I loved my first Moto X, sure. But when I hold the new Moto X next to my old Moto X, I'm like, the old one feels definitely less um, well-made it mm -hmm. feels like there's a lot more plastic in it, and you can tell, and, you know, that's, that's a little frustrating. Even though the new X is kind of a weird mutant. Um, I like the M8, even though it's, it also is a weird mutant uh, compared to the M7, which is kind of a trailblazer. I have to disagree on the Samsungs. I like Samsung's phones this year. Uh, yeah, I disagree on the Samsungs, too, because the S4 was, like, the most boring flagship I'd ever seen out of Samsung. It was like a, a duller S3 with a bunch of features that sucked if they weren't useless. Um, whereas the S5 brought waterproofing, at least, uh, which I think to, was, a, was a pretty practical addition. It improved yeah, and the maybe camera. the heart rate thing's a gimmick, but it's something new they're trying. I'll throw them a yeah, bone there. On the, on the hardware side. So, yeah, and, and then the, the Note 3 versus Note 4, I certainly disagree with this. Better stylus and feel in hand, but not worth the upgrade. No, I disagree. It's I, a I mean, major upgrade. It's a major upgrade, yeah. I mean, yeah, the Note the 4 is one of the have. best Samsung phones hand. ever made. That feel in hand is a major improvement. Totally agree. Major. When I was carrying the Note 4 to power the Gear S, which uh, this is the Moto 360, the Gear <laughs> S, which I uh, whose review goes live tonight, um, I didn't mind. It was it was the first time in a while where I had to go back to a Samsung phone to support an accessory, and I was like, I actually didn't mind. I was like, oh right, this is the Note 4. This is my buddy. It's awesome. It's like so. So no, I don't think 2014 was materially different than uh, was less dis. Ugh was more disappointing than 2013. I don't think so, no. Uh, what think, do you guys think, Taylor? I think it's the, the rate at which we're improving and advancing is slowing down, and uh -huh. that's visible this year. But I don't think that affects the I guess, quality of the products all that much. I think they're improving enough. But you have to set your expectations because you can't advance at the same rate forever. You just mm. can't. That's not going to happen. I mean, if that were the case, we would have insanely powerful phones. They would be paper thin and probably <laughs> completely translucent by next year. You know, like, yeah, it, it doesn't happen. You have to gauge those expectations. And I, I actually, stepping out of the industry for a while, I've started to not miss the new phones, but I guess opine for the newer models that I never actually got to try because I don't get to try them anymore. Like, I'm really craving a Moto X, a new one, really, really bad, and the Nexus 6. Brandon and is selling his cognac leather one. What? Right. Brandon is selling his cognac leather Moto uh -huh. X. Oh, I'd love that, but I'm broke as hell. Well, if uh -huh. last year is any indication, we're going to see big discounts on the Moto X come January. That's when Motorola really started pushing the uh, original model. Probably very true, yeah. But, yeah, but yeah. once you gauge your expectations, you're not setting yourself up for so much disappointment. If you're expecting everything to be a quantum leap from the last phone, you're going to be disappointed <laughs> even more every single year. Quantum leaps are small leaps, not big ones. <laughs> or, or not quantum leap, 
a, a giant leap there. Yeah. 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 It's a giant set of quantum, sorry. But, but you get my point. Like, if you're expecting your a huge and I didn't increase know every year, yeah. Then, yeah. then you are setting yourself up for, ex- or for disappointment. That's all there Very is to Very good it. point. Solid. You, you want to uh, you want to, Taylor? We didn't we weren't able to send you the mail because apparently your every mail from me gets auto archived in your Gmail inbox. Oh. Yeah, I don't know why that is. I, I, you may have been sending me emails this whole entire time and I've not gotten them. So I may have been. you'll never know. You'll never know. I'm working on the spam. This is the final one from uh, Lewis. Uh, hi there, Pocket Now team. I listen to the show every week while commuting in Sao Paulo, Brazil, as we spend many hours in traffic down there. here. You should have at least a 10-hour podcast to get me through the whole week. Sorry, Don't we're not sure. Yeah. Thanks for the brilliant job you guys do. Thanks for listening, man. Question. Google Glass seems to be delayed now basically because of social acceptance issues. Don't you think Google should change lanes here and position this product as a fitness tracker? No. I would love to have something like that with the following features. GPS, sweat-proof materials, GoPro-like features, music play, call answering, real-time fitness data, standalone operation. This would make a lot of sense. And I think a lot of people would jump into this concept. Thanks a lot. Regards, Lewis. Two things, Stephen, and then I'm going to let you go. One, Lewis, I think you are not wrong. I think a lot of people would probably jump on it. Um, but two, I don't think enough would to justify the transformation of glass, which is uh, it's kind of in a category of its own into a category that is so friggin' crowded right now because everyone it seems. Everyone who can get a hold of low-cost components and a reasonable design that, like, attaches to your body somehow is making fitness trackers, and I think... Tell me if I'm wrong, guys, because this might just me be me hating fitness culture again, but I think even if you're a fitness guy or, or, or lady, you're probably burned out on fitness crap by now, because there's so much of it out there. Am I wrong? Yeah. Yeah, and I don't know that... I mean, I'm not a super fitness guy, but I can't imagine you get very useful data out of a lot of these. For, like, aerobic exercise, maybe. But if you're involved in any sort of, you know, workout plan where you're lifting and you want... I mean, you can track data with these apps if you're manually entering things, but they're not going to provide you any useful feedback on muscle mass, fat percentage, the things you need to know to know if you're making progress. Yeah, no, no, no. I, I mean... Make you get Tony and Jaime on here. Yeah, exactly. And we've seen uh, Samsung, for example, bring out some really, really great health features that that really does do a great job of monitoring everything from your diet to your caloric ex, you know, uh, expenditures to your blood oxygen level. And yeah. these, you don't get sunburned while you're running. Like, you know, <laughs> like that's that's a crappy thing, but... It's a really good suite. It's a really, really good offering, and that's built right into your phone. And if you want to expand it a little bit, you've got a watch to do it. Like, yeah, I just... more to the point of, of this question here, of the this feature list here, 9 out of 10, what was it, 10, but most of them there would work just fine as a smart watch. Nothing right. about fitness tracking makes sense in the, besides video recording like a GoPro, nothing makes sense with a head-based form factor. Right, and I, I like the idea because it is an interesting way... If it were not Google, if it were a company with without Google's resources who really needed to make Glass a hit or die, I could totally see them doing this because it's not a bad conversion, right? I mean, I, I understand why you would think this. I think it's a, it's a very smart idea, but I also don't I don't I don't see it being successful. I think it's a smart idea in theory. I think it would not work well in execution. Taylor, what do you think? You've lost like ten pounds in the last two months, right? No, I have not. I, I lost five, and then I gained it back at one Five Guys trip. Oh, okay. Because <laughs> that was what I was referring to. I was like, wait a minute, you lost a bunch of weight, then you went to Five Guys, and then what? Yeah, and then okay. I'm back where I started. No. Uh, well, well, then no, it's there's... your bangs. Your bangs are doing a good job, because you've got, <laughs> you look very... You always look very cut and, like, you know, like uh, svelte in your in your Instagram photos. Oh, nice. Thank you. No problem. <laughs> Last night, it was all the sawdust, though. That was, yeah, uh... the sawdust. That's right. Uh... Just gives you a lot of texture. Um, no, there's only been one fitness tracker. I mean, I've tried like four or five of them, and there's only been one that has ever appealed to me, and I think Apple acquired it. I can't remember the name of it, but the only reason it was actually any different is because it would actually track your caloric intake. Um, I don't know if I mentioned that on the coffee podcast. How? Do you like, enter in all the food you ate? No, 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 no. It used some sort of light data to actually measure some sort of influx in your bloodstream like through light technology. I have no idea. 
it's what it is, how it's powered. It, it's tricorder. magic. Yeah, right there. And, but if it did any sort of even remotely... Um, <laughs> I, I'm just, I was Googling looking for the name of this company and just stumbled across a uh, story someone wrote on the site, TechHive. Wearable snake oil. The search for automatic calorie intake tracking. <laughs> that's okay, that's a good if, headline. But if this thing were even remotely accurate with your caloric intake and even remotely accurate measuring your output or, or how many calories burned then for me it would be worth it. Because the only thing that really makes these things worth it is if you're actually taking the step to track your own calories and do everything that it asks you to do, and then at the end of the day you're left with usually some some number that means absolutely no nothing. It's arbitrary, it has no real-world value, like the Nike fuel points or the points you rack up using a Fitbit. Like It just doesn't make much sense. Uh, Arrow, yes... Where is that? Get Arrow. A-I-R-O, Jules is bringing up helpfully in the chat for us. Yeah, that's the one it was. Okay. Um, so it was supposed to track your stuff. If I'm not mistaken, Apple bought them or something. I don't know what happened there. <clears throat> but outside of actually like using scientific and, and accurate numbers, these fitness trackers are doing nothing to actually help you. They're just gamifying well, the fitness game. Is that not helping, though? If it gets you excited about being active, even if it's not giving you useful quantitative info, if you're exercising, that's probably a good thing. Right, but there's a problem with gamifying just about anything, and that's that it usually kind of wears off after no, like mm -hmm. after a certain amount of time. Because it requires your friends to also gamify their fitness, and if everyone doesn't keep it up, one falls off, then everybody falls off, and everybody stops, because that's not fun anymore. What good is it to compete with yourself? Like it's just so that they all hinge on compete or competition, and if you don't have those people there to compete with, it's just I, I've I've tried them all. I was very very adamant about sticking to the Nike Plus Fuel Band. I did for five six months, and then all of a sudden I'm like, why? Why do I care if I get to ten thousand or five thousand or forty thousand in one day? It doesn't matter as long as I'm actually doing a little exercise. So that, the problem is that they're all arbitrary, and at some point the, the newness and funness of, of meeting your goals every day wears off. That's just my personal So experience. we've got some... No, well said. Well said to the both of you. And we had plenty of responses in the, uh, the Q&A, and I think, uh, you know, uh, what we, we should get... Next time we have Jaime or, or Tony on the show, we'll take some more fitness questions. Until then, I'm going to fall asleep if we keep talking about it. So... Uh, <laughs> I've been trying Something... to find that Moto X from Brandon. Where is that thing? Oh, well, he's not. It's not. No, no, no. Stay tuned in with us because he he was talking to me privately about it because I was asking him for input uh, mm -hmm. before I published the leather durability report. What if the new? This is from Sunny Kalra, and I think we all can comment on it a little bit. What if the new HTC Hema, maybe the M9, packs a 1080p screen? Would you be disappointed with everyone coming with a 2K display? Also, I am most excited about this flagship than any other. That build quality. Stick and tongue out face. <laughs> not uh, in the you're supposed to make the face, Michael, not read it. <laughs> no, uh. we have, I, I have an audio audience that I, that I respect and enjoy. Listen here. <laughs> no, 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 I wouldn't be disappointed. I would love it if HTC did a 1080p screen on that device. I don't need 2K at this size. No one really needs it. And for the love of God... Stop it. Everyone just stop it. Now, Keep that being tablets. said, that being said, if HTC does this, I have no doubt that they will suffer in terms of sales figures in part because of this. Because people have been brainwashed into thinking that they need 2K and they just don't. But it doesn't matter because it's it's one of those specs that... that you that do need 2K because more pixels. Right, more pixels right. More pixels is better. equals more better. Yeah, right. Can I get the phone with more Gs? I get the yes, exactly. So, uh, it's, Sonny, we'll, we'll be talking a lot about the M9 a lot this coming year, I have a feeling, so don't worry about it. But listen, this is directly tied into Bruno Gomez's question. I can't get how brands don't focus on bigger batteries. Don't you guys, do you guys think brands will focus more on longer battery lives in 2015? Bruno, this is, they've been doing it. 
It's just L not the consistent. Droid Turbo has a 39 yeah. amp hour battery. The Nexus 6 has a 3220. Um, the Note 4 has a 3... Well, of course the Note's gonna. Right, but the point is, as we've said on this show a lot, and as I've said in a lot of my reviews, and as I think an editorial said on our site based on my recommendation, 2014 is the year of huge batteries and only average endurance because of those... The 2K screens. To a certain as, degree, not, yeah, as, not as, Taylor, as Taylor taught us. It's, right, right. Yeah, it's not every time. But Taylor, set my brain correctly here. In some cases, those big ass panels are indeed causing this battery drain, aren't they? Yeah, and and it would stand to reason that if there are efficient 2K displays, you would have even more efficient 1080p screens. So boom, exactly. boom, yes. So, yeah, Bruno, it's not that the battery sizes are not there. Manufacturers are bringing the added, you know, watt hours. It's that they're being utilized for features that people have convinced themselves are important, and it's stupid. Yeah, give me that 4-inch WVGA phone with a 4,000 milliamp battery. Word mm. up, man. I don't know about that. <laughs> I know. 1080p is fine. And yeah. if it's lower than 4.7 inches, 720p works. But those, Pierre, those are, uh, that's the threshold there. Fair enough. I want to know what you guys are thinking about this because I have a feeling there's a disagreement brewing. Are you sad there's no G Flex 2 out yet? Thought LG would keep pushing curved displays, asks Pierre Jimenez. I it could be happening. I, think I it's have on lost no sleep over the Flex fact two. that there's no Flex 2. I've been losing a lot of sleep. This is part of the reason I'm so exhausted. I just can't I can't go to sleep at night because I don't have a G Flex 2. I love the G Flex, and I really want a G Flex 2, and I'm hoping that we will see one soon. Hold your breath. I'm it doing it. A, it'll have an awesome feature called image retention. Shut oh. your <laughs> mouth. It's like the e-ink display you never knew you wanted. but Right. Yeah, it saves power because it doesn't have to refresh. It just yeah. saves it. <laughs> I'm do, I do hope that if there is a G Flex 2, they solve that burn-in problem because that was rather extreme. It is It is true. Yeah. yeah. Um, uh, Stephen asks an, an interesting question. No, he, he doesn't. Uh, Dushant uh, Shri asks an interesting question. How do you guys manage all your devices in long-haul international flights with the individual carrying limits and whatnot? I've never run into a carrying limit for mobile devices. I've actually I mean, always just been... in general you have carry-on limits, but small phones are small. You can fit a bunch of them in. Oh, you can stack so many of them in, and I carry them on my person too because I'm too afraid to check them. Right, you have so... your holster. You have a couple in your pocket. Yeah, a couple LD West uh, pouches right here, and uh, yeah. cargo pants that I like so much. But no, I always get scared rolling into security, especially in other countries. I don't know what's what their thing is like. Here's here's a guy with ten phones and two tablets. What's his problem? But yeah. no, I've never been stopped for my bag of electronics. I got stopped for a candle in my bag once, but not for <laughs> was my it, that was that was on the way back from. It was from Berlin. Yeah, it was yeah, the yeah, yeah. candle was I brought to, to freshen up our room. Yeah. Well, you have to check out the latest WikiLeaks thing. They leaked a couple C, uh, CIA guides on how to get things through airport customs. You can get tips from the pros on how to smuggle all your devices through. Oh, terrific! Yeah. <laughs> I, I've never struggled with that. I've, I think. To va I think every time I go into an airport, I'm like, they're going to check me, they're going to check me. And they pulled me to the side once because I had so many phones and tablets. Oh, they uh, did? That, okay. Yeah, that was the first time I went to CES, yeah. and or the second time I went to CES. And I had probably 15 phones in my bag, three or four tablets, <laughs> a MacBook Air, and who knows how many cables. And they pulled me to the side and pulled everything out of my bag and checked it and then put everything back in. Oh. Like making sure that wasn't... I was really nervous internationally. Like, yeah, I was really nervous going through Teagle on the way back, but it was fine. No problem. I was mostly nervous because my bag barely zipped. Like, I had to, yeah. like, <laughs> wrench it down and zip it back. And you open it, it's torn. like opening a, a spring snakes in a can. Lies yeah. everywhere. Tablets flying everywhere. Uh, this is something I've never heard of before in my life, but uh, um, it's interesting. Dante Solibut says, uh, just wondering, can we remind people getting smartphones this Christmas? or Hanukkah, or whatever, not to test them by calling the emergency service. What? They have better things to do than make sure your cell phone works before you get your SIM card. Obviously, but who does that? I don't, I don't know. know. I, like, I, don't th I, I, I looked up, I tried to look up this question while you guys were talking and to see if there was any trend, if there was any yeah, reporting. Yeah, what are you... I haven't seen. I mean, like, do you not believe that the cellular radio works? Are you checking voice quality with the emergency operator? Yeah, right. Are you like, buying like, your phone from a known thief? 
Like, yeah, what's, <laughs> what? That's download. the strangest thing. But don't do it. Don't call 911 unless you, you mean If you want to hear voice quality and you don't have your SIM yet, put it in Wi-Fi, download Skype, and give that a spin. Blappity blap. That's what we're yeah. talking about. There was, yeah. a, um, there was a really new, cool news story recently uh, about, about Android Skype vulnerability. No? No, no, not at all. There was a guy, he was 30-some years old, but he was uh, operating at, like, a, I think a seven- or eight-year-old's level. He had a, someone had given him an old, un- or like, no longer used phone to listen to music with, and he kept dialing 911 on accident. And he uh, dialed over 4,000 I mean, times in a week. God. Damn. And, and the, the dispatch office, because they felt so bad for him, they actually bought him a new iPod and gave him a $100 iTunes card and uh, said Merry Christmas and took his phone from him. <laughs> Which yeah, nice. like here. It was so nice. That's such an awesome thing. Like, I gave my mom a phone to play with and get familiar with that's only on Wi-Fi. There's no SIM in there. And you get that emergency calls only screen all the time. And I, I put it in airplane mode eventually, but it would be nice if there was just some permanent switch other than airplane to say, just don't use the cellular connection. Not interested. Yeah. I guess it wouldn't even show up as an option. This one has been upvoted uh, significantly, and we've talked about it before on the show, but because it's the most upvoted question, I feel like we have to address it. And then after this, we'll do maybe two more, then we've got to get out of here, guys. Mm-hmm. Why do you think the Amazon Fire Phone failed, asks Zachary A.B. Bad carrier option, bad OS, bad price, bad everything. No, I'll answer this first. Bad carrier option, no, I, I think if, if a phone is appealing enough, you, you'll jump carriers for it. AT&T proved that with the iPhone. I think that was overblown. Bad OS, no, I don't think so. I think it was actually pretty good software. Bad price, yes, it was horribly overpriced, and that was the major problem. Bad everything, no. I think everyone thinks that because it got such poor reviews. I thought it was a great phone with the wrong price tag. What do you guys think? I kind of got the everything. opinion, you know, <laughs> bad everything is the obvious answer there, but um, yeah. from reading your review, Michael, it seemed like maybe the OS itself wasn't bad, but the issues that it brought with it, specifically app access and being pushed yeah. into the Amazon App Store, which is a side effect of not having Google Play services. It's not necessarily a, a, a problem that's inbuilt to the OS, but it's the side effect, and if you're used to having really convenient access to apps, that's a big problem. Yes. Yes, that yeah, is, price, that I don't know if the price was bad. It was our expectations were different because we were so used to Kindle Fire tablets being these very, very affordable options, and we kind of assumed the phone would be a similarly super budget model, and it just wasn't, which might have been okay yeah. if we knew that going in. I don't think it would have seen because I mean, no. you look at this. They were, they, the you know, they're asking one ninety nine on a two year contract. You could have gotten a a, a top tier Android smartphone, a top tier Windows phone, and an iPhone for the same price on okay. a contract. But it had a lot of storage. This I mean, it was thirty two gigabytes for the two hundred, wasn't it? Right, but with those with that uh, ecosystem disadvantage, mm. it came with great stuff too. It came with two a year of of Prime for yeah, free. Yeah, hundred bucks right there. <clears throat> but yeah, the, all that stuff is is not enough to counteract an inherent ecosystem disadvantage, as you were saying. See, the, th- the thing is, I would never recommend a Fire Phone to, to anyone, because I would also would not recommend the Fire Tablets to anyone. As, but they're super popular. But as Wait, budget, because they were so are, cheap. Yeah. Right. As budget-friendly yeah. as they may be, the ecosystem just isn't there. If you want some, like, bang for your buck, find an old iPad Mini for sale, mm-hmm. find a Nexus 7 or something to that degree, because you can get much more bang for your buck, and that's how I've, I, I will not like back away from that. This was one of the best purchases that I, ugh, that I made. <laughs> Drop the, shatter. Yeah, the Nexus Seven. I would Is recommend. Is that a brand skin on there? Yeah, 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 yeah. Nice. Yeah, oh yeah, that's cool. But uh, yeah, I, I, after using the first couple of Fire tablets, they're just. I can't get used to the carousel UI. It's not user friendly for people who don't actively use tablets and and want to learn something. Because I mean, I've given my grandma one and she just could not figure out the carousel UI. It's just not user friendly. It's not difficult, but it's not intuitive. Well, how's that differ from the lollipop vertical carousel UI? From what? What do you mean? I mean the task switching. But that I mean that's that's one page versus an entire it's not UI like the experience. Launcher. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Whereas I don't find the carousel to be... I, I think the carousel is fine, but then we get into talking about WebOS and all that kind of stuff. But I, I think the carousel as UI center is a pretty good idea. 
and I hate waiting the two and sometimes three seconds it takes for Lollipop to bring up the carousel when all I want to do is switch apps. I mean, it's so freaking frustrating. Mm-hmm. Just put it in the center of this. Have it right there. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> I've been trying to find a good Q and A question to go out on, but you know, so many of these are so strange. But guys, guys, by the way, blah, 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 blah. audience, uh, you are submitting so many awesome questions uh, that we can't even handle it. There are so many questions in here, and it's really, really cool. Ahmad Hassan makes a very good point. We need more Joe Levi uh, on the next podcast. I agree, and uh, the thing is, Joe's just so busy. And I'm I'm sorry, but we we'll, we get them on every time we possibly can. Ariel Weisman says, "Taylor, I missed you." And every mm-hmm. word in that sentence is capitalized, so you know that uh, that it's, it's true. true. I, I missed you too. I missed you too. See what I mean? See what I mean? <laughs> Razvan Lupu, anyone? EDM music? Yes, please. Um, sorry, sorry, I don't <laughs> listen to it from time to time. I just don't I don't have an opinion really. Um. <laughs> and uh, I, I, I just, it's, it's difficult for me to find a, a song. Thomas Vu has a pretty good one. What, Stephen? Oh, Stephen is awesome too. <laughs> oh, my girlfriend said really she times. loved your glasses, Stephen. She said That's she loved amazing. your I've glasses. I've said that a couple times. I on spent show, a rich twenty-five dollars on these, so these better be good. I, it just something about them. It's the glasses. I told her it made me think of a young Drew Carey. <laughs> Young Drew oh, Carey was yeah. fat Drew Carey. Yeah, I know. No, it's later Drew no, 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 no. I don't mean that. It's just like, like, uh, it's, like it's the glasses. I can live with yeah. it. Yeah, it's not a, it's not a <laughs> bad thing. I'm not ripping you. I'm just saying. Yeah. It's a compliment. <laughs> Thank you. Taylor, what are you going to be working on after we, uh, after we get clear here? I'm still looking for the final uh, question. So, what are you working um, on for mod today or Todoist or what are you, what are you getting to? Yeah, I've got a, a Todoist collaboration video that I'm working on. Got to finish collaborating with bro. Well, it's not. I'm not collaborating. Oh, it's yeah. just like You're mod and Todoist. Yeah, and uh, maybe a vlog. I don't know. A little vlog. I notice you do your vlogs while driving, brother. Oh, I, I watch that. Don't race me, bro. <laughs> don't, yeah, don't race me, bro. <laughs> I get so many people every time I leave the house trying to race me. It's so annoying. <laughs> um, but yeah, the cool stuff coming up. Uh, I have a friend who's going to be on mod very soon, making some cool things. I don't know if I'm going to show off what it is that he's making because I might turn it into a mini mod. I don't know. Can we have a little sneak peek? Can you can you hint at it? Can you give us a can you give us a, a, a too yeah. close photo that doesn't tell tell the whole picture but maybe whets our appetite? I don't I don't even know if I can hint anything without giving it away. I'll just say he's a leather worker. How about that? Oh <laughs> you're bringing Horween on the show. I wish I wish do you know where I can buy like wholesale big pieces of leather for not eight hundred dollars? No, God, I don't know. Just go out and know that. Go cow. <laughs> I wish I did, Build brother. A cow. Go <laughs> <laughs> find a cow. Don't cows just wander around? Find a cow. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. We could probably make it out of deer hide. I mean, there's a lot of deer hide just around here. There you go. Just to tie up a loose end, Bruno Gomez again. I, Flossie Carter. I want him on a podcast. Agreed. We had him oh, lined yeah, up. What for, happened to that? Well, we had him lined up for two weeks ago. Then we ran into a technical issue, which, uh, which uh, we had. Our equipment was incompatible. So we're. I, I would love to love to get him. There's a standing invitation for Flossie to come on the show anytime because he is a freaking hilarious and awesome. And I want to meet him in person someday too. We've never covered an event together, weirdly. Um, but yeah. So anyway, uh, Christmas wishes from everyone says Nathan Lococo. I will broaden that to holiday wishes uh, to everyone as well and thank you and back and forth and inverted and upside down um, we have about 40 more questions to get to but in let's fact we have to go oh. we have to go what's what Stephen what let's do them all <laughs> let's do them all I know I would love that but I have to uh, I have to do some holiday <laughs> traveling and before that I have to <laughs> have to post some more some more videos for you also uh, have to shoot a short video clip for me because that takes like 10 seconds brother. Um, Unless you what? want me to shoot it with this camera, uh, I you don't want me to do it right now. What the <laughs> shit is Jules showing in the video there? <laughs> I don't know. Okay. I, tell. I think next week we're going to have Anton Dinoj on the show, everyone, because he has been guy. asking... Oh, God, that's so gross. What are you doing, Jules? They're water balloons, but they look EDM? like... Is this EDM? Is this a music video? Oh, uh, it's probably an EDM music video, yeah. Uh, God, everything gets weird when, when we switch to the Jules feed after the mail. 
<laughs> oh my god, folks! If uh, if you don't watch the show live um, and you listen to it on the audio, the audio is better, but the uh, you miss out on some pretty wild stuff. Mm. So. Uh, I think it's a, it's about time to go. I want to thank Taylor um, for for taking the time out to 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 tell us what life is like on the other side. You, you look happy, you look healthy, um, and uh, and you look well. So I, I think we're all pleased about that. T. Yeah, thank you. I'm very stress free these days, and it's nice to say that. Oh <laughs> man, that is nice. I wonder what's that like, brother. I describe that. I'm just relaxed all the time. It's like a walking dream. <laughs> I get bored and I build something. I make a video about it, and then. Go back to sitting on my couch. Playing that is video mad, games. boss. Tell people where they can find your videos because mod, I don't know if you know this, is the single worst thing to search for on the internet if they're looking for you. Yeah, uh, <laughs> well, it does come up now if you search mod under channels on YouTube. It's the top option. But um, you can find me at mod at home on YouTube. So it's youtube.com slash mod at home. That's where you find us on, or me, on Twitter, Facebook, Google+, Instagram, and on YouTube. Sounds good. And of course, good. my old Twitter handle is still there, CasperTech. Of course. Of and course. you're going to be on Untethered sometime soon. Yes, sir, I will. Yes, sir, I will. I'm, I'm going to spend some much-needed time away from work, and after that I'll be an all-new person. Maybe I'll get a haircut, maybe I'll trim up this beard, maybe I'll put on a new shirt if I get one for Crimbus. Well, this, uh, is, this is a perfect opportunity for me to fill that Michael it. Fisher void on the Internet. <laughs> Because I've reached that <laughs> point on Patreon door. where I have to be Michael Fisher, so I haven't done uh, that yet. Yeah, that's true. That's true, and I'm really that's pleased. a slippery slope, man. It's actually happening. <laughs> this is gonna happen. <laughs> I want to say uh, to you both, and don't worry, everyone. We're gonna hear from Stephen uh, and his Andy Rooney segment again when there's more stuff to be about. But you know what? Uh, it's a holiday season, and the news cycle is a little slow. And you know what, Daddy. Stephen? Maybe you'll join me in this opinion. That's fine right now, isn't it? Yeah, considering what's coming up for us in another week or two, I think a little breather is well appreciated. No one, no one hates on a little relaxation. Mm. <sighs> Are you gonna get the flu before you go to CES again, brother? I'm so <laughs> sick right now that if I get sick again at CES, I might just, I might just drive into the desert and and find a new life, man. You know what I mean? <laughs> we'll see. Um, we'll I don't see. know if you heard, but my goal is to make it back to Berlin this this coming year. What That's for Eva? Goal. Yeah, my goal for mod is to to make it to Berlin to find like because they got three D printers and all kinds of cool stuff there. So cool. that would be if mad I can make the IFA, yeah. If I can make the IFA, we're going back to uh, to Yam. We'll go to we'll go to Yam. We'll go to we'll go to Burgermeister. But we'll definitely we'll go to, to Burgermeister. I don't want to go back to Yam. <laughs> Listen up, everybody. Ali Spagnoli, you should know the name by now. Uh, it, her transition track is what we use on the show. It's not her transition track, it's ours. It's her ringtone. It's not just a ringtone, it's a song. It's a sweet song. It's an awesome song. She's got millions of fans around the world. She can always use one more, I imagine. Be one of them. Visit her YouTube channel, youtube.com slash Ali Spags. Her website, alispagnola.com. Both of them linked in the description below. Steven? Let's say we get out of here. That's going to do it for this episode of the Pocket Night Week. By Jules Wong, telling us all about getting shocked by his smartphone on Twitter at Greenpoint Zero. Oh, no. Watch out for that, Jules. And spinning sweet songs at WERS.org. And we'll be back at WERS uh, next week or the week after. Also, be sure to find the hosts on the Twitter sphere. Stephen's debating the subtleties of teaser vids with industry insiders at Stephen Shank, S T E P H E N S E H E N C K. Taylor Martin is showing you all the different ways you can build a bottle opener at Casper Tech and also Mod at Home, M-O-D-A-T-H-O-M-E. And I'm complaining about Star Trek 3 because Fast and Furious, for real, at Captain Two Phones. Captain the number two phone. Oh, not Search for Spock. <laughs> no, the new Star Trek 3. Spock and I was also on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, and, yes, Google+. And again, if you enjoy the podcast, please help us spread the word. Leave a review iTunes, Stitcher, Xbox, wherever podcasts are heard. As always, we thank you very much for listening. You're a great audience, and thanks for your questions today. We thank our sponsor at Squarespace. We will be back with more Mobile Tech Talk next week. Good day, sir. Happy holidays. Terminate the broadcast. I was going to